This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Chest tones are hot. The honorable leader of the opposition. Prime Minister's arrive scam is now flailing out of control. Today, revelations from a Joël Denis Bellevance that one arrive scan company received a quarter of a billion dollars in contracts. Let's get this straight. It's a company with four employees headquartered in the basement of a tiny cottage. They got IT contracts even though they admit they do no IT work. A quarter of a billion dollars? W-T-F. Here, yes. here. Uh, we are dangerously close uh, to crossing the line uh, in terms of what is considered parliamentary language. I'm going to ask the honourable uh, uh, opposition leader, please, to uh, to withdraw that that comment and to use uh, parliamentary language, please. Where's the funds? I appreciate that the, uh, the leader of the opposition uh, had clarified that comment. I'm going to ask all members to not use the acronym, because the acronym in the minds of Canadians clearly would be considered unparliamentary language, and to use the full words. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, during the time of pandemic, the government rightly did everything it could to keep Canadians safe and, uh, and keep them protected. But of course, even in the most uh, trying times, perhaps especially in the most trying times, all the rules need to be followed. In this case, the Auditor General has uh, highlighted some very concerning questions that need to be answered, and that's why uh, we're expecting and supporting all relevant authorities uh, to follow up on uh, these irregular contracting and this uh, perhaps breaking of the rules. This is an important issue, and that's why we're taking it seriously, Mr. Speaker. We're going to resume the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. So let's recap. A company that had never before received contracts from the federal government started getting an avalanche of contracts just three weeks after this Prime Minister wow. took office. Wow. The company, uh, in fact, got a quarter of a billion dollars for IT, even though it admits it doesn't do IT. It has four employees and has a headquarters in the basement of a cottage. Can the Prime Minister explain why this suspicious company started getting these contracts exactly 21 days after he took office? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It's obviously an unacceptable situation, which is why uh, the uh, relevant authorities are fully investigating exactly what went on here, uh, particularly highlighted uh, by the Auditor General's uh, recent report. Uh, this is an issue uh, we need to continue to understand uh, and make sure uh, that the rules are being followed, uh, make sure that our procurement practices across government uh, are respectful of taxpayer money. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. More proof the Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the corruption. After eight years of doubling housing costs, quadrupling the carbon tax, sending two million people to food banks, he... The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. ...key leader's question. The question was, how can the Prime Minister waste 
millions of dollars on a rive scam when Canadians can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves? The answer is because the NDP keeps that Prime That's Minister right. in power. That's right. That's right. And votes consistently in committee to cover up the scandal and shut down investigations. This was supposed to cost... This app was supposed to cost 80 grand, said the Prime Minister. Now it's at least 60 million, but we don't know for sure because of missing documents. What is the full and final cost of a RIVE scam? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I've uh, addressed these questions, but I will highlight that part of the uh, Conservatives' attacks uh, on this situation uh, is because they deeply deplore all the measures we put in to keep Canadians safe during the pandemic. We remember how they gave in to conspiracy theories, spreading anti-vaxxer conspiracies, uh, standing against measures that we needed to put forward to keep Canadians safe. Yes, as we did all those things, we needed... needed we made sure that rules were followed and any rules that weren't followed there are consequences uh, and there are investigations ongoing. We will continue to keep Canadian safety at the fore. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. What was the full and final cost of the app? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that, are, uh, that is among the questions that there are direct follow-ups. Uh, investigations ongoing right now, both internal and external, to ensure uh, that as rules were evidently broken, uh, there are consequences, there is an accountability for this. There is no, no doubt that there are serious challenges around procurement uh, and the public service uh, that were evident at that time. We need to make sure that is fixed. We need to move forward uh, in a way that it takes uh, better responsibility responsibility uh, for uh, the kinds of challenges that we saw in this situation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. How much? <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, during the pandemic we were there to invest, to protect Canadians and keep their lives safe, despite the objections and the conspiracy theorism of the Conservative Party, we stepped up in many, many different ways. But even as we did, we expected and we continue to expect the rules around procurement be followed by the public service. It is uh, obvious that that was not the case here. That is why there are ongoing investigations, there will be consequences, and there will be changes made uh, to the public services systems. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister said Arrive Can would cost $80,000. According to the Auditor General, it cost at minimum $60 million, 750 times more. But we still don't know because the records weren't kept properly. But the Prime Minister has access to all documents in his government. So the question is, how much did the app cost? How much? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. As I said, there are investigations underway trying to find out exactly what happened and who benefited and what the consequences should be. This is very important. But remember that at the same time, everything we did was to protect Canadians at that time. And we expected even during that terrible crisis that the rules would be followed. And obviously they appear not to have been followed. So that's why there's an investigation to shed full light on the situation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Combien? How much? Le the Right Honourable Prime Minister. As I said, Mr. Speaker, there are investigations underway to find out who is responsible, what rules were broken, and what the consequences should be for those involved. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The people involved are taxpayers who can't pay their bills anymore, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Government has access to all the documents. Does he think we believe he doesn't know how much that cost? How much a RIVE scam cost? He doesn't know how much his own app costs. He has the power to call for any document he wants from the government. So, either 
He's covering it up. Yep. He's incompetent. Yep. Or worse, which is it? Yep. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, there are ongoing investigations, both internal and external, that are following up on exactly how this unacceptable situation happened. Uh, we received the Auditor General's report last week. We are following up, and we have been following up on this for months already, Mr. Speaker. We're going to continue uh, to make sure uh, that uh, anyone who broke the rules faces consequences, that systems and structures uh, surrounding the public service and procurement uh, are changed. Uh, this is something we are taking very seriously seriously as we must. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Our common sense plan acts as the tax, builds the homes, fix the budgets, stops the crime. The Prime Minister can't defend his policy so he's changing the name. People hate the carbon tax because 60% more, pay more into it than they get back in his phony rebates. So today he announced a costly rebranding of the, car, the hated carbon tax. My question for him is, how much did he spend on consultants in order to come up with the new name, and was it GC Strategies that he hired? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition doesn't even understand uh, the consequences of the cuts he's proposing left, right and centre. He proposes to take away the carbon price rebate, uh, the Canada carbon rebate from uh, millions of Canadian families across the country. The Canada carbon rebate is going to be there to continue to deliver more money to 8 out of 10 Canadian families uh, in four checks uh, over the course of the year that puts cash in their pockets while we fight climate change. We're seeing uh, reduction in emissions uh, that Canada is leading on. We're also moving forward on growing the economy and supporting Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He couldn't even get the new name of the carbon tax right. It's only three words. The Prime Minister should learn that we can't improve life by slogans alone, Mr. Speaker. That's right. So that's why, that's why we propose the facts. I have here a distributional analysis of the federal fuel charge by the Parliamentary Budget Officer, which shows that 60% of Canadians pay more in taxes than they get back in his phony rebates. Why won't he follow the facts and ax the tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The opposition wants to talk about facts. The Canada carbon rebate will deliver $1,800 uh, in Alberta to an average family of four, uh, $1,200 in Manitoba, uh, $1,120 in Ontario for your family of four, $1,500 in Saskatchewan, $760 in New Brunswick, $824 in Nova Scotia, $880 in PEI, and $1,192 in Newfoundland and Labrador door to a family of four. Eight out of ten families across the country get more money out of the Canada uh, carbon rebate. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Eight years this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of housing, which has doubled as he builds bureaucracies that block homes. In January, according to data out today, rent was up 10% year over year to 2196 an astonishing increase in a very short time. In fact, it's up about 20% in the last two years alone, and it's accelerating ever since he named his, his, recently, his incompetent housing minister. Will the Prime Minister follow our common sense plan to cut the bureaucracy and build the homes? Yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know that cuts from the Conservative leader wouldn't get more homes built. Uh, if he was really concerned about rents, he would line behind us uh, and support the lowering, the removal of the GST on new apartment constructions. Uh, that's something they actually voted against, Mr. Speaker. We know that unlocking greater supply of housing, including with purpose-built apartment buildings across the country, is a way of bringing down rents for people. That's a concrete solution that we've put forward that the Conservative chose to vote against for political gain and for political reasons. We're going to continue to be there to do the hard work of delivering for Canadians while he relies on catchy slogans and misunderstanding what it is that he's choosing to cut. 
The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. We were the ones that proposed taking the tax off home building, Mr. Speaker. The one idea, that good idea, that he finally copied. But he talks about slogans. One is the Housing Accelerator Fund, the $4 billion program that was supposed to speed up housing. We asked the Housing Minister yesterday in committee how many homes it had completed. The answer is zero. Nada, nothing. His quote, it doesn't actually lead to the construction of specific homes. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, What's the Mr. Point? Speaker, it cost... $4 billion to build zero homes, how much would it cost to build one? <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, we have the clear proof that the Leader of the Opposition doesn't even understand the proposals that he's counting on cutting, that he's promising to cut from Canadians. The Housing Accelerator Fund is about investing in municipalities across the country to change the frame around which they build homes faster. It involves uh, rapidly uh, eliminating red tape, it involves increasing densification, changing zoning, making sure we can unlock far more houses construction than any federal government could build on its own. This is the approach that we're taking and it's in its working, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Four billion dollars, 35 photo ops, one minister, zero homes. He not only says the program doesn't build homes, he says it doesn't lead to the construction of homes. He couldn't point to one development that had actually been completed. They've been in power for eight years and they can't get anything built. When will they get the bureaucracy out of the and the taxes out of the way so that we can build the homes? Sorry, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, the only tool that the leader of the Conservative Party has put forward is cutting, cutting programs in order to somehow create more homes. What we're actually doing is investing in partnership with municipalities to eliminate red tape, to accelerate the construction of homes, to increase densification, uh, to change zoning so that more houses can be built. He wants to talk about a number. Half a million new homes are being facilitated by uh, the Housing Accelerator Fund right across the country. Uh, we've signed these over the past months. Construction is all already underway across the country. Communities. The Prime Minister is not worth the crime, chaos, drugs and disorder he's unleashed in our streets. He has signed on with the NDP government in BC to decriminalize crack, heroin and other hard drugs and allowed for drug injection sites in Richmond. Courageous and patriotic Canadians of Chinese origin rose up to speak out and protect their kids and were treated to racial slurs by NDP Shame. radical activists telling them to go back where they came from. Will the Prime Minister reject this liberal racism and ban hard drugs so we can stop the crime. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the impact of the toxic drug and overdose crisis on our communities is absolutely devastating. We're using, using every tool at our disposal to work with partners to end this national public health crisis. Unlike the opposition, we're following an evidence-based approach while working in partnership with stakeholders, experts, and people with lived and living experience. We take the safety of all Canadians seriously. That's why from the beginning we've approached this from both the public health and public safety perspective, hand in hand with the BC government in this case. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He wouldn't condemn the racial slurs, but he did issue a vicious condemnation of his own record. Let me quote what he said about life in Canada after eight years of his prime ministership, and I quote, yeah, grocery bills suck, rent sucks. Mortgage renegotiations. Oh my God, how are we going to deal with it? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is life after eight years. What is his slogan going to be in the next election? Vote for me and life will still suck? <laughs> <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister.
The Right Honorable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, did he just say, vote for me and life will suck? I think that's what he just said. Uh, the reality is, uh, we have put forward smart, responsible solutions to fight climate change and grow the economy, to lift over half a million kids out of poverty, to invest in the kind of economy of the future, the good careers, whether it's in uh, zero emission vehicles, whether it's in mining or forestry, uh, whether it's in advanced manufacturing. We're continue uh, to bring more women into the workforce with initiatives like child care. We're moving forward on dental care, which the Conservatives voted against for seniors and young people. We're going to uh, be there to invest in a better future for Canadians every single day. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Actually spoke the truth, maybe by accident, by saying that after eight years, life sucks for the very middle class of those working hard to join it, he, to whom he promised so much. Yep. He taxed their grocery bills with a quadrupling carbon debt tax. He doubled housing costs after promising to lower them. He's unleashed a crime wave across the country. Now that he admits that life sucks under his leadership, why won't he accept our common sense plan to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime?